Okay, here we have a uh, dismantled Rigel DSA 815 TG, which is the uh, spectrum analyzer with tracking generator. Um, I've mentioned this to a couple people, you know, ever since I've had this thing that uh, I have. Uh, this has the advanced option kit. So when you buy one of these, let's start from the beginning. When you buy one of these, they come with the. I don't remember how long it is, 12, 24, 36, 48 hours. I can't remember how many hours it is off the top of my head. But it comes with a trial period of the advanced measurement package. So, you know, it has all, basically all features are enabled on it. And it's trial period, which is, I think that was a really good idea, you know, because uh, that can be a big outlay because the advanced, it's not like it's a $25 upgrade. They're not cheap <laughs> buying those upgrades. Um, matter of fact, if you get all the upgrades, I think if I remember right, that costs more than the damn spectrum analyzer cost <laughs> to buy it. But uh, like I say, they come with the the advan uh, come with those features enabled for a limited time. Now, it only counts down or takes away from that trial period time when the unit is actually turned on. So you can leave it plugged in. And if you don't use it for five years and you turn it on, you're still going to have every feature enabled. But once that timer runs out, you no longer have any, you know, trial time left. You're left with a standard track, you know, standard spectrum analyzer. Now, if it had the tracking generator, because you paid for that license key when you got the tracking generator option. So that will still be enabled because that's for life. But uh, those additional uh, features will go away. Now you can, you know, then at that later date when the time expires, you can then buy the license key. You just punch it in the keypad, you know, they'll send you the, the license key. And then you can re-enable it, and then you'll be good. But there's a way around that. Now, it's, I don't think anybody ever did a video on this. And I, and I know somebody else that has one of these and asked me, because uh, they were afraid to get into it, they're going to screw something up. And I, you know, they asked me, they said, would you mind showing me exactly how you do it? So, okay. So I've taken it down. <laughs> it usually lives on top of that oscilloscope and underneath of that old antique uh, tube-type uh, Paco signal tracer. And I've popped it apart. So the first thing you need to do is dis disassemble it. It's very easy. There's four screws on the outer plastic cover. So you have two at the bottom. And there's even the warranty sticker still intact. You can just slide a mica wafer or a piece of Teflon under there. Actually, you can undo these warranty stickers and completely not damage them at all. And then underneath of the handle, there's two screws there. The plastic cover will just pop right off. Now, once you have the plastic cover off, you need to get the rear shield and power supply off. Okay, so there's six screws. One, two, three. And then... Uh, what is it? Or is it no more than that? One, two, three, four. No, oh, it's eight. Yeah, four holes across the bottom. Yeah, one, two, three, four, and then same thing on the other side. Five, six, seven, eight. So they go, you know, right along the bottom side here. And then you will also need to take off three nuts, where these BNC jacks protrude out through the back of this shield. There's a nut on the outside, so you'll need to take these three nuts and star washers off. Once you have those off. Lift the power supply module up, depress the little release latch here, and disconnect the power supply module off of the main circuit board. Now you're going to need a soldering iron with a really, really fine tip, because what we're going to be doing here, it's already done on this one, but what you want to do is, and I just stuck the tip in the iron here, is you need to lift leg 7 off of the uh, ICU, oh god, what the hell is that, 1105, yeah, 1105. You're going to lift leg number 7, or pin 7, of that IC, and you're going to basically kind of push it sideways and then solder it to pin 8. So you're just shorting, lifting pin 7, and shorting it out to pin 8. So, But you're going to need a really fine tip. Now this one was actually even finer. This is a paste soldering iron. This is a conical tip, and when these things are down to the tip tip, it's almost literally a needle point. It's almost too fine. So, um, you know, what I do with these is I just take a file and... I, I go across the tip this way, you know, like maybe one stroke, just take a little bit off the tip, and then I file it in each direction to make turn it into a basically a micro uh, chisel tip. But uh, you're going to need to do, you know, need something like that to get down in there to desolder that, because we're working with surface mount and parts are really small. So 
what we're looking for here is, uh, let's grab a pointer, is U1105. And that's this little guy right here. And if you look, you can see, I'd almost need to slide a piece of paper or something underneath of it, but pin 7, which is the, the second, or the, you know, counting from the left, one, two, the third one over here is pin number 7, so desolder that. And the way I do that is, is I don't actually touch the lead of the component. I'll bring the soldering iron down to the pad, you know, to the solder pad that the, leg, the lead is on. I'll touch the solder pad, and then you can get in with like a dental pick underneath of it, and when the solder melts, you can lift that leg up. So once you have that leg lifted up, then like I say, just push it over to the right and down a little bit, and then you're going to solder it. To focus again, you're going to solder it to pin 8 right there. And now you have... Uh, base. It's not that it's disabled, it counts. So you have to have some time left on your on your uh, trial period, but every time you turn it off and turn it back on, it resets to whatever time was on it. <laughs> so, you know, on this, on mine, I waited till, uh, hell, I have to turn it around, turn it back on and show you. I think there's two hours or I don't know, whatever, whatever the amount of time was left on the trial period. It's been so damn long since I did that. Um, but whatever that time is, it's basically permanent. Every time I turn it on, if I go into the license key, you know, the license, the systems menu, I'll show you. Um, you know, like I say, it's done there, so I can actually be putting it back together while I'm talking here. But, uh, like I say, it's a easy way to hack <laughs> your free trial into a permanent, uh, you know, never expiring license key. So basically your trial period just turns into your trial period never runs out because the counter never runs out. It just an easy way to save a few bucks because like I say, it is a really, really expensive feature. So let me pause the video here. I'll get it put back together, turn it around and show you where it says trial period and I'll show you the, you know, the, uh, the time on it and then, uh, you know, back out to another menu and then come back to it, and you can look at the seconds and see that it, you know, or I can turn it off and turn it back on, and you can see that it didn't change, the, the time is still the same, it won't change. So let me pause the video here. And here we are, all back together, turned on and working. So, uh, to get to your license information, you hit the system button, scroll down once, to see the license, and you go to license information. So you can see it says, uh, actually, here's the licenses right here. And you can see they're all active. The, you know, tracking, the tracking generator option, official, yes. And then the other three options in this, um, the advanced measurement kit, the EMI and uh, VSWR, they're trial, but they're active. And now if we go to license info, it shows you the times. So you can see the... Uh, tracking generator option because I got this from the factory with the get the little cover off there with the tracking generator so that's the official license key that's last forever good indefinitely and then the three trials are right here now actually if I back up to let's look at this one right here we'll write that down so two hours that's six minutes and ten seconds so if I go back to options and back to license info again, you can see it's already counted down. It's taken off some of that time. So two hours, you know, it was six minutes, ten seconds. There's five minutes, forty seconds. So you can see it's counting down. But let's turn it off. Turn it back on. Let it boot up. Okay, we'll hit system, scroll down, license, license info, and you can see we're at 2 hours, 7 minutes, and 50 seconds, and we were at 2 hours, 6 minutes, 10 seconds. So every time you turn the unit off and back on, it resets to, you know, back when I had jumpered the pin 7, you know, lifted pin 7, or leg 7, and soldered it to pin 8. 
whatever the time was when I, you know, that last time I turned it off before I did the modification, that's the time that it resets to every single time. So, uh, now, I don't know if this works on the newer ones. Uh, just so you know, this one is running, uh, let's see, let's back out, system, uh, what the hell is it? Information. Okay, so this is running uh, mainboard double lot point oh eight. RF board FPGA is double lot point oh five. The digital board FPGA is double lot point oh five. The two important ones, I guess, are the firmware is double lot point oh one point one four, and the version of boot or the the boot version is double lot point oh one dot oh four. Because um, I've had this for quite some time, so they prob actually I should probably go online and see if they have <laughs> update updated uh, any updated software for it. I really don't need it because I've never had any bugs. I've never run into any issues with this. So there you go. There's just a quick video. And if you have one of these, as long as you still have some time left on your trial period, all you got to do is lift leg seven and solder it to pin eight on IC number U1105. So there you go. I hope that helps you there, Greg, which is the guy I wanted to say this video was specifically for.